I've been doing this 23 years. A friend of mine crossed the street from where I lived when I was younger. He got into it and I joined him. Been there ever since. My dad's been doing it for 15 some odd years before me and he you know, kind of passed it on. Beginning of the war, wasn't really looking too good for the, uh, the Union, for the North. Prairieville kind of gave the Union Northern newspapers some good news to write about. Um, militarily, you can say it was kind of a, a stalemate. Both sides kind of claimed victory. Historically, it's kind of, it's kind of a draw. The Kentucky had declared neutrality. And unfortunately, uh, General Polk of the Confederate Army had invaded Kentucky first, which put a lot of Kentuckians on the side of the Union. And uh, not too many Kentuckians really realize it, but most Kentuckians were for the Union. The uh, Confederates decided after the battle to go another direction. Union forces, the president kind of considered that a victory and gave him something to write about, because up until that point, it wasn't looking too good. This morning's battle was really fun. We, we got up about 3.30 and we got online and we marched out there and we waited. And the, uh, the Yankees actually started it, which is different for us because they uh, were back in Arkansas. They're not, they're not usually as many Yankees as there are us. So, it, you know, it's nice to have an aggressive Yankee force. And I mean, we, 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 we bring it to them. And I, I ran out of the cartridges and I died. So, it's basically all I remember. I actually took a little nap out there. <laughs> Actually, me and my dad went to Frankfurt, and we, we ran into a gentleman who's here today. And he just kind of asked us, he said, offhand, you know, you guys ever thought about doing any Civil War reenactment? He was like, yeah, sure. It's like, cool, because they're actually raising an African-American unit. And we was like, wow, really? So, and of course, that was in 2001. And me and my dad, we've been doing it ever since. And, and, and that's a good part of it, because me and dad get to come out here and do the father-son bonding and things like that, and, it, and it, that's, that's interesting. That's fun. Oh, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. This history is the love of my life. I study history, I reenact, uh, because I have, actually have ancestors that were in the war. We like to bring it out to the people so that people can see it and touch it and feel it, the tactile sense of learning about the Civil War. They can actually see the horses and the wagons and the things, and it brings history much more into their heart, much more into their head, and they understand it a little better. And the young kids just love it. And if we can get it into the young kids' history and respect for our nation's history, they can grow up and continue that onto their children. There's a great rich history in this country, and we really need to keep informing our people of that so that we can know what our national character is and why we got where we are today. I'm a history teacher in my real life. And it's kind of, it's personal because of the African-American participation in the Civil War. And it's kind of important for Americans to know the struggles and the sacrifices that past generations went through, especially here in the South and in Kentucky, that we kind of pay attention to that. It's important because, I mean, 60,000 Americans died here on both sides. Uh, it's important to remember the, that cost and what our country went through in order to be the unified country that we are today. People need to know, you know, this part of our history, you know, if it wasn't for the Civil War, no tell them what the world would be like, you know, it changed history. So people need to know what happened here and uh, just getting out and living it, it's, it's the only way to teach somebody, is the way of just living it. It, it's very important. Uh, too many of the young people today don't know uh, what other men have done and sacrificed for our country and what we have. Uh, and all these uh, veterans and the, these circumstances, uh, it, it's something that ought to be studied more. They don't study it enough in high school and grade school as they used to. And everybody needs to know about their roots and uh, what their ancestors have done. Well, we actually recreated the Jones and Brown fight. Now, General Jones had come up that ridge that you've seen come up through these woods here from Doctor's Creek. He went up the top of that ridge, and there were some 
uh, skirmishers up there. Now, skirmishers are an advanced line of troops that are sent forward to feel out the enemy. They were up there, and they were yelling at Colonel, at uh, General Jones, rather, not to come up, not to come up, because there was a huge amount of Federals up on that other ridge, and they had all kinds of artillery and infantry. J Jones wouldn't listen. He comes straight up. This was his first command. And he comes straight up, and he got about decimated coming up over that ridge. He lost about 50, 60 percent of his men right off the bat. And they fell back in disorder. And just a few hundred yards behind him was General Brown. And then he brought his boys up, and they went over that same ridge. They went much further than Jones did. Perryville is a very important, the most important battle, I imagine, in Kentucky. And it was a severe battle. Of course, my great-granddad was a veteran of Pea Ridge and the others, and they were recognized for bravery there. And they were glad to see the Pea Ridge boys come in and to help. But they were put into a, a losing situation. They were already being driven back when they ordered them in, and uh, it was a terrible situation. 35% of the men were either wounded or killed. And so they saw some real tragedy that day.